All right, welcome everybody. This is Barney Quincy coming at you live from Ontario, Canada. And uh, I'm so glad that you're here. And I don't know if you're here live right now or if you're watching this as a replay, but either way, I just wanna let you know that um, I just wanna say thank you in advance for helping me to continue to fulfill my mission and vision and legacy as a human being to um, continue to impact and reach millions and millions of people to get better in touch and in tune with the plant and animal kingdom. Um, so we have a great call here today, um, and I just want to put this out here right now. If any of you are, um, or for, I should say, for those of you who are in Young Living and or oilers, I'm going to encourage you to get some oils out. This isn't mandatory, but I pulled out two today that match my shirt. It's uh, Valor and Highest Potential because I have a sense that this is going to be a, a phenomenal call uh, with Sherry. So um, first and foremost, if this is your first time coming here to kind of give you a little bit of context, um, I am a Young Living leader in Canada, and I started the Wild Success Summit um, quite a few years ago, and it then turned into um, a lot of interest in people wanting to learn about using oils with their animals, and so that's where um, the Wild Success Summit, has, or pardon me, the Animal Success Summit has come into play. And I'm going to presume that some people that are here <clears throat> now or in the future are completely new, so if you haven't yet, haven't yet gotten yourself signed up, for our free online summit. This is our third year that we've been doing this. Um, and it's November 7th to the 16th. And I will put a link, I'm gonna grab the link, but it's really easy to remember. It's just animalwellnesssummit.com. Um, and you can just go right there and get yourself signed up. Um, and then you can join in on our free access. And also we have some paid options for you to consider as well. But anyways, what we do every week is um, we found that the summits are amazing and they're awesome, but it's like drinking from a fire hose during the, when we actually do the summit, because there's like four or five or six pre presenters every day, usually five or six for the whole, you know, 10 days. And then, um, and it's overwhelming and it's a lot to take in. And we had a lot of feedback just saying, hey, like maybe you could do some stuff during or throughout the year. So these live weekly coaching calls typically happen on uh, every Wednesday at 1 p.m., uh, but sometimes we do them at special times like a Friday night and at 4 p.m., or pardon me, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And so I don't want to uh, waste any more time on the housekeeping items, but I wanted to make sure that if you're new here, you know what's going on. And for those of you who are our regular enthusiasts and members um, and fans, I just want to say welcome back. So um, Sherry, are you ready to go over there? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. All right, so let's bring in Sherry. And there she is. She's got some funky looking glasses on there. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. You bring me in real fast. Yeah, I brought, that was really quick. I said, okay, here's Sherry. Yeah, we're good. I'm just trying to find my well, thing. Now you, well, now you have to tell us the story about those glasses because they look Oh, really? Cool. really? Okay. okay. Well, I'm your, trying to find the coolest thing ever. I can't believe you can see him. How come I can't see you? You all can see me, but I can't see you, oh. sir. I'm not sure uh, you should be able to see me straight uh -uh. up. No, I can't. Okay, Nick. Where's my Nick? Nick, um, yeah. Sherry has a helper with her. Um, that's I, um, logged into yeah. the computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to find my Nick here. Let me find Nick because he's got to help me again. Sorry, yeah. guys. That's Everyone, okay. sorry. Okay. I'm gonna have, he's got a plug. I, get, oh, I see create a free account. Unlock all your free features by signing up below. That's what I see. Yeah, you shouldn't have to. Um, let me let me let me go. Oh, there he is. Yeah, just click on the window, and then you should see. Him. There he is. Okay, he's back in. Thanks, buddy. Okay, okay. so you're not you can to put, it, put it this way. Well, he's doing his thing. You can. Um, he's good. Well, at least people are laughing. At good reason to laugh. Okay, Sometimes so the these are my worst laugh. blinders. <laughs> All right, so you have to be right behind. Okay. Uh, night, yeah. Uh, okay. August 29th, uh, 2016. Yeah. For those of you who are at the animal conference, I, uh, I, I uh, with the help of a very angry horse's hind right leg, I got flown through the air out of my boots <laughs> in front of everyone. I haven't even touched the horse yet. I just went to go touch her. I was in the front right shoulder, safe zone, total safe zone. But she was not she was really not happy and we all knew it. And I, what I literally thought was, I said, I'm gonna have her smell some orange oil. Did this was in front of everybody at the training. And then I said, I'm gonna try one more thing. And if it doesn't work, I'm gonna ask for a different horse. 
because it's not safe for her or us or anyone to be hand, you know, being trying to do raindrop on a horse that is like that. And so um, I literally um, went to put my hand on her right shoulder. I had some oils on my hand. And then my other hand was going to go right under and just touch a, a point to create security under her belly. And before I even got my hands on her, the next thing I know, I'm literally, I felt this extreme burning pain in my left leg. And then I woke up and I was flat against the, the uh, steel. Young Living doesn't have anything light there. They have it, like heavy duty steel uh, panels in the round pen. And I was spread out like this, spread eagle. And my, my boots were where I was standing and I was knocked out over there against, <laughs> flown through the air. So I ended up with pretty significant injuries, which we didn't realize how bad they were until time had passed, left leg rebuilt, you know, right hand. I want to see something really fun. I I have this bone here, partial bone here. I have that bone there, but no bones in between. So watch this. This is pretty fun. Wow. <laughs> you see? wow. <laughs> yeah. Pretty so, pardon me. I missed that part. And I uh, have you ever seen that um, interview where there's a guy on a political um, interview on on CNBC or I don't know on on a big news channel and all of a sudden he's doing the interview and his one daughter comes strolling in the back and then all of a sudden the wife comes in and takes all the kids out. Did you ever see that before? No. Okay. Well, that just happened to me now. My wife, we had an overlap and three of the kids came in here looking for something. So that's why I disappeared. And I also missed the part that you just said about this incident. When did this happen? The uh, Essential Oils and Horse Conference at Young Living Farm, yep. April 29th, 2016. So that just happened this year, what you just 20, Nope, 2016. Oh, 2016, okay. Three years, three years ago. Okay. So it took me a while, a few months I had. That was in April, August 3rd. They finally could go in for surgery and rebuild the left leg, cadaver bones, all that good stuff. Um, and then on October 31st, left hand got taken apart and MacGyvered. They MacGyvered my whole left hand, so it works. But... Um, what was interesting is I had a torn kidney, three broken rigs, rigs, three broken, three broken ribs. Yeah. And um, you're getting the extent of the concussion. Now I ended up with a class four concussion and I've been having a lot of challenges and the more stress that I experience in my life or the more I don't get enough sleep, just a lot of things. Yeah. Um, the brain injury is really coming forward. So this week, I, I have a, the most amazing physical therapist, finally, after going through four, I finally have one that specializes in this situation. Yeah. And we have discovered that, um, like horses, and, and you weren't supposed to see them because I couldn't see you. <laughs> Michelle goes, Sherry, don't let them see you in your goofy new uh, fashion statement. <laughs> So and you did. It. I'm like, oh, yeah, that no, so, was perfect. I like, so I, I have my is. I have my horse blinders on. What we have discovered as wow. you know, one of the issues is the peripheral stimulus, the part of the brain that handles right. all the visual so stimulus out here. I was, I just, this is okay. Welcome to Barney's brain. I just made the connection. So this is like you when you made that you're actually when you're making the reference i was I, I missed that part that's because it's blocking out all the neurological feed that comes in from the eyes so that it's less draining on the brain to make it so you can still function without having too much strain yeah because otherwise the pain shoots through the roof i mean it's very accelerated the part of the brain that handles some of this peripher peripheral field on both sides got damaged from the yeah. impact and so, um, and it also was causing me to literally not be able to walk straight. <laughs> wow. And just a few other things because everything around me was reverberating. It was literally reverberating. So it, it was a really unique, and I also have double vision. One eye splits horizontal, the other eye splits vertical. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so when I take these off, Barney, I see four of you. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, so they're going to come off because in my in my brain, yeah. <laughs> I know consciously who you are, what you look like. Right. So I literally focus on my brain, not my eyes when we are together. So my hair doesn't get too distracting for you then. <laughs> of course. 
well, so that, anyway, so yeah, so there you yeah. have it. Okay, well, that's that's the story behind that. That's interesting. I, I have, um, uh, they're not in here, but they're blue light glasses I wear that aren't yeah. prescription. But Yeah, these uh, are yellow. They're yellow. Uh, let yeah, me I see, see that, yellow. yeah. Yeah, because they uh, also the blue light has been really debilitating, so they're yeah. down to. Yes. Yeah, they're uh, just a side note for you guys. Everybody else who's out there, I don't know. You know, there's. I think that for the most part, they're pretty much the same. I mean, I'm sure there's slight differences in quality, but I was having issues because I, since I've sold my gyms and I'm working more in the office, I'm with Young Living, yeah. my marketing agency, I'm behind a screen more. Yeah, doing all the stuff at the summits, and I found that I was straining and I was getting a lot of neck issues. And now that I put them on, it's it's unbelievable. But if you're behind the screen, even on your phone or on your computer for more than an hour or two a day, I would very highly recommend that you just Google blue light blocking glasses or something. Um, and, and that's why for Young Living, the new Illuminize. Yes, because that's what it's designed to do is repair that damage. And in addition to that, it's designed to, um, that was Ningxia Red, and you literally can rebuild your eye and also help rebuild the optic nerve. Powerful. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's a side note for you guys. So now you know the, the reasoning behind uh, Sherry's fashion statement. Um, <laughs> so Sherry, just so you know, we have people from all over the world on tonight or this afternoon. We have Sarah May, one of our uh, members, uh, VIP members. Um, and uh, Sarah May all the way from the UK on. Um, she said she's uh, sitting there. It's 10 p.m. over there, and she's got a cup of tea and a lap of dogs at the ready, as she says. Um, oh, thank you, Sarah May. What a privilege to have you with us. Really, thank you. Yeah, and there's going to be some questions. So um, I know that there's going to be questions, and I know that those of you who are on here have posted, um, or I'll, be, I'll presume that some of you had already posted your questions. If you haven't, you can post them. Just please keep in mind that we're going to do our absolute best to get through as many as possible. Um, but we we really find that even if we don't get through every question, the really important ones tend to rise at the surface or the ones that really need to get answered that uh, affect a lot more people will come through. Um, so I think one other thing before we jump right into the question, Sherry, is that, I mean, I know who you are and, and some other people, in fact, a lot of people know who you are because people are like, oh, Sherry Ross isn't here. This is going to be great. You're going to want to, people are tagging you. Uh, Seriously? Seriously? Yeah. They're like, wow. they're like, Sherry Ross is really cool. We want to listen to her. Um, wow. And Well, you shouldn't find it that hard to believe. Um, oh, but, yeah. but for the people who are like, who the heck is this Sherry Ross chick? They're like, I know who this bald-headed, crazy Canadian guy is. It's on here. Um, but can you just give us in your in the best way possible in a few minutes um you know of course just in general about your story because it's really powerful like you've been i think involved with young living for like a, a year or two or how long has it been one or two couple yeah. uh, so this, over, over 20 years okay please tell us because you out of a lot of people you're one of the very few that i feel like um are in Young Living that have been around, had the great fortune and opportunity. I've gotten to meet Gary directly and spent a lot of time with him. There's a lot of, not a lot of people that have had the chance that you have, but even, I know you, we're not going to have time for all the Gary stories, but just tell us the history on you and how you got to be where you are, because there are some people that don't know who you are at all, and I think that's going to be really beneficial. Okay, so the very first thing I'm I'm going to lead with, and whether this flies in your uh, within your belief systems or not, it's my life. The truth is, um, Young Living was very God directed in my life. It showed up in my life not by a person actually, um, but by divine intervention. And I was very very ill, and it was an answer to a prayer. And I didn't have a long time left on this planet. I was very ill with lupus eating up my internal organs. I'd been hemorrhaging pretty bad for quite a while, a number of months. I was being treated holistically from a phenomenal holistic physician and also from oh, one of the top internists in Minnesota, which is known as the land of medicine. So um, I was very, very blessed to have great, great professional care, but everything that everyone tried was not working. So I prayed and I asked for, I, what basically my prayer was this. Um, I, Cause I, if you can picture it, 
It was in January, 1999. If you've ever been in Minnesota, Barney lives in Canada, so he knows what these days are like. Humid, colder than cold, colder than cold. It was so cold that because there's humidity. And, and it was a night, it wasn't snowing, but there was stars out in the moon and the air was so cold that it was crystallizing. That's how cold it was. And it looked like an enchanted evening because I could remember no one was out because it was so cold. And I was walking and I, I remember hearing and feeling the crunch of the snow under my feet. Uh -huh. and, it, and it was just, it was to me, that's magical. To other people, they're like, are you effing crazy? <laughs> I love crunchy snow. Yeah. And so I was all bundled up. The left side of my face had a big hole in in case, you know, when you see me present, especially if I'm tired or, or things, you know, emotionally things are a little tough for me. This whole left side will droop down. Um, but this was a big hole here. And some of you can see at a, at a big hole here and that's what you could see visibly physically. And then, uh, and then also internally pericardium ascending colon kidneys and the brain lupus was literally devastating my internal organs and and so wow. i just i was all bundled up because for me nature you know for lack of a you know that for people who might understand those words so i went out for a walk and i just prayed and said god you know i got a feeling i'm not supposed to leave here because i've had way too many times to leave this planet and i'm still here <laughs> so you better get me what i need and get it pretty quick because doc told me today that i don't got much time left hmm. so uh i i was very peaceful i was very very peaceful i wasn't there was no fear at all in my in my beingness or here or here, no fear. I was completely ready to go, but it, my intuition, my senses said, you know, ah, no, nah, you're still here. <laughs> you're gonna stay for a while. <laughs> but I didn't have anything. So the oil showed up in my life and I'll save that because we have more important things to talk about today on, on how to help these other people and our animals. And um, I stopped hemorrhaging in literally three days. And uh, by using one oil, Immu Power. I used it topically. I'll save the humorous story for another time, Barney. And uh, and because um, it's quite a humorous story when you hear the whole details. And then uh, I went back to my physician. I was going every five days to my doctors because uh, the holistic physician could not order certain medical tests. So they worked with he worked with my internist, who um, now is chief of staff at one of the largest medical centers in the U in uh, the U.S. in Minnesota. Here, so the guy the guy. I mean, I was privileged truly to be with the best care. I want to be real clear about that. And. We kept, nothing was working, nothing. And all of a sudden, boom, I use these oils and I go to my physician and he's like, started, started working on me and doing some tests. He goes, Sherry, what'd you do different this past week? And I'm like, nothing. He goes, yeah, you did. I'm like, nope. And he goes, he stopped and he looks scrap me. He goes, Sherry, what did you do different? And I looked at him and I said, not telling you. Because I'd been, ever, all my friends, I was at that desperate point where everybody who knew me or knew, knew of me was giving me stuff, having me buy stuff, throwing me stuff, try this, try this, try this, try this. It wasn't working. And it was either taking my money um, and not working or making me worse. And I'm like, you know, he said, stop, stop. And I was on 129 to 141 herbs a day and I was still dying. Okay. So that's the level that this body was at. And what he said was quite profound. And then he said something else down the road. And that's, I think, will lead off. And then the rest will dive in. Because, yes, I've had the privilege. Gary Young has, whether this is compliant or not, Barney, you know, I don't know. I'll save the medical. But with I'm not, you know how some people go, oh, yeah, they saved my life. No, literally, Gary Young has saved my life five times. Wow. Five times. This body would have been off this planet. And Gary showed up in my life. Again, divine intervention. He showed up. And um, he's like, Sherry, you need my help? And I'm like, oh, my God, do I ever? And got me turned around. Mm -hmm. But back on track. So my doctor, he go, he looked at me. He said, Sherry, listen to me. You have to tell me what you're doing. And I said, why? Because I'm afraid you're going to take it away from me or tell me I can't do it. And something inside of me is screaming at me, telling me this is your solution. This is what the piece that you've been missing. This is it, Sherry. And I said, I was not willing to, to give this up because my whole beingness was screaming, going, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And if I could put words to the feelings, that would be as close as I could get to the words. And what my doctor said at that point, he said, Sherry, he goes, Sherry, your body has stopped degenerating and it started to regenerate. It's five days since I've seen you. I've never seen this happen before. I need to know what you're using. Wow. And I literally said, I don't know. I'm messing around this little bottle of stinky stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said, because yeah. I have been using oils since 1975. This was 1999, January. I've been using oil professionally since I got into the barber beauty industry, the whole salon, spa, wellness, that industry. I got in in 1975 from a professional standpoint. And um, I've been around some of the top, you know, the chemist, the chemist, you know, back in the early days of essential oils in the United States, Aveda was it. Aveda was the thing to do. And I, my mentor in chemistry was Wally Lavac, who horsed, literally, I was working with Wally and Horst came in and said, I'd like you to help me to create this new product line and it, that Aveda was born. Oh, wow. And I worked with Wally Lavac on the first couple of Aveda products. So that's kind of my world of essential oils and how I got in. So when I got this bottle of stuff that was more medicinal, if you will, or therapeutic, if you will, other than smell yeah. good and make you pretty, I'm like, what? I, this wasn't essential oils to me because for 24 years, my orientation to essential oils was not these little bottles I have in my hand here. Right. So there you go. Well, that's, um, that's phenomenal. And I think that that was good because I wanted to, I know um, I just wanted to just share that because um, you know, it's not like you've been just doing this for a couple of years. This is like, you live <laughs> this, you breathe this because some people don't know, right? I mean, some people don't know that the history and, and where you're coming from. And I think it's a good, Good platform, and even if people are know who you are, um, it's always good to get a little bit of a background. So it's always really special and unique because there's always every uh, time we have a presenter on. There's you know, I mean, we all have our own stories, of course, and what makes us unique and um, special in our own regard. But I just thought that would be really helpful. Do you want me to give a one minute synopsis on kind of what this body's been through? Yeah. Just since then. <laughs> yeah. We're talking ninety nine. Um, uh, let's see. Well, uh, I've had cancer three times. First time parotid gland. I had a large shooter marble sized black tumor right in there. That was in 1990. In 2000, I was diagnosed with stomach and intestinal cancer. In 2002, July, I was diagnosed with uterine, breast, and brain cancer. Um, was Cancer markers were growing 5,000 points every three hours and was given a two to three weeks to live. Um, that also brought the lupus back. Each cancer was not a, a reoccurrence of a previous cancer. Each one stood alone. University of Minnesota calls me an anomaly. They've never seen this happen in one body before. So bam, there you have that. I've been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, fibromyalgia, gout, uh, Graves disease, Hashimoto's disease, and one more. So there we have the autoimmunes. Wow. And I have had a, a, a viral and bacterial meningitis um, five times, a brain, a brain stem and spinal cord. Um, in 2000, it was so bad that the neurologist that I was uh, brought to said I would never walk again because the spine had been eaten up so badly from the uh, meningitis that I literally, the, the damage was irreparable. And if they could get it out of me before I died, I would never yeah. walk again. Um, I've had more broken bones than anybody. And it, I think when I was training, I just got back from training glamping in, in Idaho. And there were some people there who'd been in Young Living for a number of years. And they came up to me. They t literally touched me all over. And they're like, Sherry, you don't have a cast on. You don't have a brace on. <laughs> <laughs> I go, they go, are you okay? I go, are you, is this really you? Like, I'm still kicking. <laughs> For 20 years, we've always seen you with some type of a healing from an injury. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that, yeah. and I've had uh, five brain injuries now. Wow. I've so, had to learn how to walk again, talk again, all that good stuff. I think this is important because um, uh, when you look at just in general, when we look at just general health and well-being and regular exercise and movement for the body and taking care of ourselves and using the oils and using certain supplements. I think that it's a, it's great to share that because 
there's a lot of people that I know that are on right now that are looking for, you know, guidance, direction, slash um, hope, I think is probably the right word where it's kind of like, you know, I sense that, I don't know if you feel that, but um, just a very st strong sense of people just feeling like, you know, I'm looking for some hope because there's a part of me that feels like I've lost hope in knowing whether or not, you know, these oils work, if you're using something else or not sure how to use Young Living if you are, or uh, with your pets and our animals too. And so I think that that's the, the, the what comes through, at least for me listening to you talk, is just the, the hope that it gives people and all of you to, to take knowing that um, one of the best quotes that I've been given by my holistic health practitioner, he would say that the best doctor is a wounded doctor. And um, so I think that that's where when you share that, I just want everybody to really take that in for a second and think, you know, it's about what, what you've been through, Sherry, but that it tells a story um, beyond having to look at all the scientific data and all the proof, but the story tells a lot and that that can be translated into the, the, the potential for um, using, um, you know, just having solutions for our pets and animals. Oh, yeah. Because our animals are, I think I'll lead with this this story, Barney, because it's a good one, and it's my and and I you know story, people are like oh it's just a story, and so I'm gonna use the word different word than story because mine are not just stories, I've lived this, and I've had the privilege of having people around me that can testify that yeah she's telling the truth because. One of the things I've run into in the past year, Barney, that I didn't realize was out there, but it's become very much like right here in my face, yeah. is people don't believe me because it's not within their thought process that what I've been through is possible. Yeah. It is not. With, so they think I'm embellishing. I just ran into it last week. Yeah. Where someone who I highly admire said, Cherry, you know, I got to be honest with you. I, I really think that you embellish. And I'm like... What? No, I hold back because if I really told what, like the whole thing, <laughs> no. Yeah. And it's it's like it's nice to have people around you that say, "Yeah, I was there," and you know what? She's not even telling you everything. Yeah. And so that's the biggest thing is to open up what we think is possible, because we only will allow ourselves to move into what we think is possible. And if there's one thing I got from Gary, and I apologize because the tears are just, man, one of these days, Barney, they're going to stop. Mm -hmm. But it's not today. And if they don't, that's okay too. Because I miss him so much. Yeah. And I wasn't a Gary groupie. You know, I didn't go hang on him. But, again, God brought us together in numerous situations where we helped each other. And um, you can't. You can't put words to that. And when you're in it, you know it's important because I did, but I didn't know how important because none of us, we all thought he'd be here for 30 more years, to be honest. Easy, yeah. And so the man is a genius. Whether you liked him or not, it doesn't matter. You cannot deny the fact that his work speaks louder than any crazy write-up on the internet that he has ever done. Yeah. You know? So, um, but... So here's this, here's the thing is the believability. My challenge, and, and you know, Barney, when we started everyone, Barney goes, Sherry, you know, we're going to get hooked up. He goes, I'm going to use, I'm going to pull out highest potential and valor. And those were two oils that Gary did wear every day, by the way, Barney, every yeah. single day without exception. Those were his two oils. You could ask them too. And he always took sacred frankincense internally once we got our hands on it. Yeah. I believe it was a 2010. And so those were his always. I mean, he never missed a day. I can tell you that. Never. Yeah. I was around him enough to know that. Yeah. Valor, highest potential, and then sacred frankincense orally. But when I when you said that, and I'm like, I didn't have any oils here because they're right in the other room. And and all of a sudden I heard I heard, I heard, believe. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So go get believe. And so this is how we're going to start this, in which we've already yeah. started. So that was a pregame warm up, like like it was a warm up. Yeah. And now we're getting into the main concert here. Yeah. Um, that was pregame. <laughs> so believe what you allow yourself to believe is where you will allow yourself to go. So my 
my and all this work you can look up bruce lipton the biology of belief i mean he's got the science to back it up to the nth degree joe dispenza i mean you guys we we got we got the big ones out there now that are proving with quantum physics and science that these are facts they're not someone's weird hypothesis opinion but what we allow ourselves to see what's possible is where we will follow with everything in us Okay, because our spirit is constantly tapping us going, come on, come on, come on over here. Come on over here. Come on over here. Don't hold yourself back. Come on over here. Come on. You can do it. Whether we listen or not is up to us. And that's the, if there's one of many gifts Gary gave me, it was that everything's possible, Sherry. And he lived from that place. He didn't just think it. He lived from it. And so when these oils showed up in my life and I experienced the impossible and what some people would call a miracle, but one of my doctors, because the third time I had cancer, um, again, I treated holistically all three times. Young Living wasn't in my life the first time, but the second time and third time it was. And, um, and Dr. Johnson said to me, I go, Dr. Johnson, this is a miracle because my, the top that back then there were only two oncologists who um, specialized in this rare form of cancer because my then husband, Steve, was in the Gulf War and uh, it was biological warfare that created this in me. It wasn't the traditional cancer. It was so rare and so lethal. And so um, because of that, um, there were only two oncologists. And so I was assigned to one of the two. And he told me that, you know, you are going to die. I mean, the whole, I'll save you that. But what was interesting is I was cancer free in two weeks, two weeks from that severity. Now, when I asked Gary, I said, why did the stomach and intestinal cancer take me 18 months to get rid of? And this took me two weeks. And he said, number one, Sherry, when you came to Young Living, you were very, very toxic. You were very sick. You had a lot of illnesses. You had a lot going on. He goes, and through the last three years, we have worked to clean up your body. We've worked to clean up a lot in you. And, and I am very disciplined. I'm, you, I'm disciplined that way. Yeah. And so what he said was, he goes, so he goes, a combination of a couple things. One, he goes, we have more science now with oils and cancer, so we know more what to do. Two, he said, your body, your terrain was not as toxic as it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. Three, he said, you already had in you the blueprint of belief that it was possible. So your brain immediately, without even questioning it, went, yeah, this is what we're doing. Boom, done. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. That yeah. Yeah, I know that not everybody, I'm saying yes on behalf of everybody. <laughs> and yeah. if you guys, yeah, comment below if this is resonating with you because I think um, what I heard you say was really just, it's the belief you had a lot of uh, toxicity in the body and that it didn't just take a couple days or a couple weeks or a couple months, it took really kind of three years. Um, and when we look at just in general, I think for our, pets and animals and ourselves that on the surface, we might think, well, everything appears normal and everything looks fine, but it's, it, it doesn't, it's not always the case under the surface. And, but you were continuing to say that, why did it take 18 months before? And then now two weeks. And this was a lethal, this cancer was so lethal, literally cancer markers growing 5,000 points every three hours. That is yeah. lethal. And it's like immediate. So, it's not, people say, well, if you don't believe in the oils, they don't work. That's a bunch of crap. They're science. Yeah. This is science. They will work whether you believe in them or not. You just have to use them. Yeah. <laughs> However, the amount of time and the amount of healing you will allow yourself, now that's where you can go. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can follow. But these oils will work no matter what, okay? And so... I want to talk about Sophie because we're going to lead off with that and then we'll get yeah. into a lot more animal stuff. Yes. Sophie's a border collie. She's now passed on. Okay. She lived to 14 and a half. She would have lived a lot longer, but she ate some twine that she was more goat than dog. I think she ate some twine when she, when I was out teaching somewhere, she was staying with friends for a few days and she ate some twine and tore her whole gut up and started a downhill spiral. Okay. So Sophie, when she was younger, um, these oils, you know, came into my life and uh, in 1999 and I had gone in and I needed a root canal and a tooth because I it was abscessed and it was right early in my young living experience. And 
literally that next day I took Sophie into the vet because she wasn't eating right and there were some problems. She had an abscess in the exact same tooth. Freaky weird. And so, and our animals do that. That's why we talk, start with the human, okay? Our animals will take on energy that we have. And every veterinarian I work with that's holistic is like, yeah, pretty much that's our experience. And all holistic people that work with animals will go, yeah, we see that kind of time and time again. So I got the Young Living toothpaste. Back then we had um, we had uh, the regular Dendrome and Dendrome Plus. And I'm not a real big cinnamon pants. So I got the regular. But I got the plus for Sophie. And, I, and literally, Sophie, I brushed my teeth. Okay, and the the doubt, the bill for hers was off the charts, uh, and so and then mine was way expensive too. And I'm like, oh, how are we gonna do this? Well, I heard about this toothpaste stuff, and I heard these oils are pretty good, and I started to research this Steve stuff and how it digests infections and back all this, you know, 99.996 percent effective against the all the bacteria that are thrown at it and all this stuff. And I'm, I started to do some more research. I'm like, well, let's try this. So I literally, Sophie came in and she literally sat on my feet, looked at me and I go, so you got, you got an abscess. I got an abscess. Do we want to try this toothpaste first? Because let me tell you, I don't got those few thousand dollars right now that it's going to cost both of us to get fixed up. And she did not do well with anesthesia at all. So I really didn't want to go there with her. And she literally looked at me and went like this. <laughs> honest to God, honest to God. And I'm like, okay. So wherever Sophie was in the house for the next few weeks, whenever I was brushing my teeth, she would run and find me, sit on my feet and go like this and open up her mouth, curl her lips back. And I'm just like, okay, I brush mine. She brush hers. I brush hers. Different toothbrush. And <laughs> in about three weeks time, neither one of us had the abscess anymore. Wow. Yeah. Pretty fun, huh? And, that, and that's from the toothpaste. That was the Dentron Plus for Soph and me, the regular, yeah. Yeah, now somebody, Beverly, turn them off the screen here. Beverly was saying, doesn't Plus have Exalitol? No. No? Plus is the one that is safe for all animals. Okay. Except for be careful with your birds and cats because it's got a lot of phenols in, so you want to be careful with those. Yeah. Yes. Okay, um, okay well, that's cool. Now, the, the <clears throat> I just pulled that up again by mistake. Uh, by the way, side note, uh, Jeffrey Lewis, I don't know if you know him, but he says hello. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he's he, he, not, He's my brother from a different mother and dad. Yeah. <laughs> I love, if I if I had if I had to pick two parents in Young Living, it would be Sherry Ross and Jeffrey Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. Okay, so this story, I wanna I had people when I the email sent the email out about that we were doing this uh, live. And then there's some other questions that I want to get to down that people have been asking um, and do our best to share some insights because that's a, a lot of the value. Of course, um, the challenge is always doing it uh, compliantly. But I think the biggest thing, if, if anybody didn't, if, if everybody was just listening up until now and the only thing that they got was just the essence of what you're sharing and having the belief and using the products and taking care of detox in our bodies, our pets and our animals and ourselves, and, and knowing that it can take years sometimes to fully cleanse the body. Um, I would say before you tell the horror story, um, the one that you told me you wanted to tell that was pretty amazing, <clears throat> can you, um, there was a question down here, but what did you use to detox? Um, I'm sure it wasn't just one thing, but um, are you able to give us a brief summary from the detox? Yeah, and and there is a wonderful book called uh, Inner Transformation with Essential Oils yeah. by Drs. David and Leanne Deerduff. Everyone, I would suggest getting that book. That is a phenomenal book on cleansing where you don't have to live in the bathroom and be uncomfortable. Um, it it is lists out in details what you do, when you do it, how you do it, why you do it, what you do in what order. If this response happens and it's not pleasant, do this. If this happens, do this. And what emotions you might be experiencing when you do all this. It is one of the best books. It's very budget friendly. Again, aromatherapy. Excuse me. Um, uh, inner transformation using essential oils. So I'll, start there. I'll put the link. Uh, because I think LS Life Science Publishing carries it, right? Yeah, they do. It's a phenomenal book, under $20, y'all. It's a great book. 
Yeah. So start there. So Gary had me do um, a lot of enzymes, and and I I was on of course sulfurzyme. Back then we had didn't have essential zyme four. We had polyzyme. We had carbozyme, and all of those were combined into essential zyme four. Polyzyme for protein, carbozyme for carbs, um, and then Gary had me on lots of essential zyme, the plain formula, which is ridiculously amazing and and um he had me i had multigreens i was on 20 sulfur zyme a day um my diet change was not not real huge for me because i already ate pretty clean we yeah. just had to put out all animal protein um but i'm farm raised farm raised raise your own food grandparents didn't believe in in fertilizer that wasn't you know manure that we spread ourselves and so yeah. Um, and no herbicides, no pesticides, you know, that's how I was raised. So I was really pretty clean, but my dad military. So I had a lot of vaccines in me and an enormous amount of vaccines in me, which is one of the reasons for the down spiral and all the autoimmune. And so, um, we used a product called Kelix back then, uh, Rehemogen, a lot of K and B cause I had seriously compromised kidneys two years, um, nine months and about, uh, 14 days of K and B tincture going through a bottle every three to four days uh, because of my severe kidney damage um, from the lupus, the compromise. Um, and so, you know, um, and a lot of helichrysum orally um, and Juva cleanse, Juva cleanse, huge Juva tone. And uh, uh, when with the cancer, I had a, a close to a thousand drops of essential oils every day orally. What was that last part? I, uh, with with when I had the cancer, I had close to a thousand drops of essential oils orally every day, wow. and then lots of detoxime, lots of detoxime daily. Yeah. Um, I was regimented, and Gary he would rotate me, um, and it was always under. I want to be really clear, you know, Gary had the knowledge, but in order to follow the law in the United States, we always worked with either a, a medical doctor. So we worked with Dr. Sherman Johnson, Dr. Roger Lewis, different medical doctors. Peter Minky was also in on all my consults as well at the clinic. Um, and he's, y'all know how amazing Peter is. Yeah. He's a PhD now. And so we had licensed professionals overseeing all this. This wasn't Gary doing like maverick, you know, cowboy stuff. No, everything was done legally. I want to be really clear about that. Yeah. And so that's what I did. That's what I used. But that book will help you a lot. Okay. Yeah. And that's good. I put the link up there for you guys. Um, and uh, I just wanted to pull this up real quick and then get to some other questions because um, this is great. So uh, Tonya Anderson or Tanya Anderson, uh, Sherry, I'm new to Young Living in the World of Such Oils as Medicine. Um, your in, in quotations, your story really inspires me. Also, the Young Living members in my life. Um, and she names Beta and Wing. Yeah, Beta and Wing. Beta and Wing. Um, light just shines from you brightly, uh, so brightly from you all. I'm so pleased to be among such people. So, and your that. your life is just beginning when you get to experience. You know that's your team intimately, but the more you get to know our Young Living family, like Barney started, you know, with like Jeffrey and and Barney, for example, who are here with us, and then when you get to know Kathy Farmer and Vicky Opfer and Marcella Von Harding and and you know Jeffrey's wife Gail Ann and all the amazing people who we are all together in this, and we all give each other strength and encouragement, and that's where we are really blessed. Yeah, the community it is, and that's. That's where um, what's really brilliant about, I, I think, I mean, that for me, organizing and putting together, it's cool and it's awesome, but it's, you know, we couldn't do this without everybody attending and being on here and me putting it together and then having great presenters like you sharing the wisdom. Um, there was, uh, and, and so I think that's the thing with both of our summits, but what's at the core of it is a community. It's not just like a, you know, slap a whole bunch of content together and put it up there and then, uh, get it out there. It's it's really to help support you guys because there's a lot that um, that we can do, and these calls are a big part of it. Um, this one, I don't know if there's a question in here, Angie, but it's a it's a big one. Just saying that you you were talking about this the other day with your daughter Dana. Uh, you used raindrop on your horses a while ago. Time to do it again. Um, we discussed the feelings kit, something we've never used on them, but it's been it's done great things for our dogs. Um, Three great minds better than two. 
uh, I think you're onto something. So is she, I think, I don't know if she's asking, have you used the feelings kit? Maybe this is a really silly question on yep. horses. Yeah, a lot. Okay. Um, and not just the whole kit. You can use the kit with, with animals now. And just like with people, um, my dad would always say, um, so-and-so has a strong constitution or so-and-so does not have the strongest constitution, Sherry. Right. And what that means is what can they handle physically and what can they handle energetically and emotionally? And we all are at different places. And sometimes I may need an oil physically, but energetically, it'll just like break me energetically. And so I have to find another oil that will create a bridge for me to get from here to there to use that oil. And so sometimes in emotions is where it'll show up faster than physical. And what I mean by that is you can't put, say you, sometimes your emotions are like tissue paper, tissue paper. And you start putting on and you say the oils are like rocks, okay, good mm -hmm. rocks good minerals and you start putting them on, how many can you put on before it breaks through the tissue paper? Versus if you've got a solid, solid board or concrete there and you can pile anything you want on top and it's going to not break or not go away. Right. And so you have to find out where are you at emotionally, where are you at energetically and you got to strengthen that and start there. So sometimes one oil, one oil is all we need. I'll give you the example of, of snowflake. She was, a um, horse in um and if marilyn monroe was a horse this was it okay <laughs> well, she was, <laughs> well, yes <laughs> got it yeah, yeah. she was that beautiful she was that blonde she had platinum she was a white 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 horse platinum not albino she had blue eyes but she was, and this was in my early days in Young Living, probably 2003. She was in, in South Texas and she was um, bought by a very wealthy um, person who sent her to a traditional old world cowboy trainer. Oof. Yeah. Who, if he was a parent, it would be spare the rod, spoil the child type mentality, if you know what I mean. <laughs> And so this snowflake who is very emotionally tender and a exquisitely beautiful, I mean, we're talking beautiful horse, was beaten quite severely. She was hobbled. She was beaten. Uh, it was horrendous. And there was a farrier who they brought out and uh, to, to take care of her. And the farrier actually took her off the property, just removed her from the property. Wow. Because she was so not in good shape. And this is where I was then teaching at the Farrier's uh, small ranch. And so I come to Snowflake and she just looked at me, head down everything. And she's like, I hear in my heart, I hear, could you please help me? In this small little, very weak, frail voice. Because I was working on other horses, but I heard her. And I said, yes. So I finished this. I went over to her. I took one bottle of Clarity Oil. I should have my kit here. Clarity Oil. Clarity yeah. Oil. One bottle. I took it. And all I did, yep, that one right there. Yeah. I took it. And you got the old label, spot yeah. on, spot on. I love yeah. my original stuff. And I put it in my hand, okay? Mm -hmm. And I, I went like this. I didn't rub it in. Because, y'all, when you rub it in, there's none left for what you're putting it on. So I put it in my hand. I put I put some right here on what would be her third eye, okay? I put some where Barney's putting his, right? The horse's occipital ridge is right up here, okay, right up here right between the ears, right up here. You'll feel the bumps. And then I took a nut and then I just held my hand there quietly. And I took my other hand, actually it was left and then right. And I went down between her legs where her heart would be. And I just held there very quietly. There was no pressing, there was no rubbing. I just put the oils on and I just held very lightly to place my hands on. And then I just got quiet and I sent to her from my heart, safety, you're safe here. You're safe here. That's all I did. And I just expressed unconditional love to her. No pity, no anything. Unconditional love. And no sadness came from me, nothing. Just unconditional love. She's already sad enough. She didn't need me to amplify. And truly, in it didn't even take three minutes. We're talking short. She literally flipped in her head and went heavy sigh. You could see in that heavy, heavy sigh, just everything she let go she just let it all go and she had tears roll down her face 
and she leads her head forward and she literally put it right here on my shoulder. So actually it's this side. And she goes, thank you. Thank you. And it was a two day class. So the next day she was a completely different horse. Wow. She was pretty, she was up, she was prancing. She was amazing. Even though physically she had been very clearly beaten. Yeah. Um, she was, she was, she was her. And her beauty shines through all of the physical damage and the emotional damage. Now, sometimes you do valor, you do trauma life, you do forgiveness, all that. But sometimes you just cut right to it. She couldn't handle layering of all these oils and everything. Yeah. She could handle one to get her there. Right. And then we could go from there. So for the, for the feelings kit, start with one, maybe three. My first time with a horse People have said, many people I work with, especially energy healers, Sherry, the horses are the dolphins of the land. They don't need a lot. Yeah. So you literally, one, maybe two, maybe three oils. If that, so off, many times I'll start with one and I'll wait until they shift. And then until they can assimilate it and embody it and go whew, shake it off, do whatever. And then maybe I'll do one more. Maybe many times emotionally, Barney, I just have them hold it. I hold it. Yeah. And they smell it back and forth, back and forth. I don't even put it on them. Mm. So when you work with emotions, all right, slow and steady and consistent is a huge thing. Long, yeah. long answer to that very short question. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, no, that's that's okay. That's great. And um, Beverly was asking, have you used the Freedom Kit for abused animals? You know, Beverly, I never have. My Freedom Kit seems to fly out for people. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I have used uh, many of our, our oils. Um, I've used Trauma Life or TOA. I have used Harmony. Another one that's coming in from the Freedom Kit is Inner Harmony. Um, I find with animals, you don't need to go through the whole kit unless, and I'm going to do a caveat, unless you have a military dog that's been through huge conflicts and trauma. Then I would treat them just like the soldier that they are. And I would follow just like the soldier. I, I come from a military family. Um, my cousins were in the military, all three male cousins. My great grandpa, my grandpa, my uncle, my dad, my brother, all career military. My former husband, career military. All branches uh, from Navy SEAL to Marine to, uh, to Air Force to Army to you name it. So yeah. I was raised in that world, okay? Right. And so um, the, oftentimes the freedom kits are too much for animals. But if you do have a soldier dog that's seen a lot of conflict, um, and especially one that's experienced great loss of those close to, to that dog, I would not hesitate. Right? I'd do a slow steady on the freedom release and, and, uh, kit, freedom sleep. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. And, I, and, and that really... You know, I think that's a, a big concern that people, that we've heard, I mean, we hear it at the Animal Wellness Summit with just people coming in from all over the world. Um, and I think there's 17 different countries that are on, subscribed to our list for the summit. But, you know, that the concern is using too much. I know that's probably the biggest one with, uh, especially with cats, but like dogs and horses. And what I'm hearing you saying is um, to echo that, very loud and clear that sometimes the well, not sometimes the less is more, but sometimes just holding it and letting them just smell it and, and seeing how they um, respond. And I think that when you get experienced and you're using the oils or you're using some even certain supplements to just test with them, um, you got to judge based on how they respond to whatever it is because um, they're going to tell you. They will, and you have to watch. And the other thing is. Be very respectful when you're dealing with emotions. If you're teaching, um, ask the animal for permission first. Don't just say you're going to do an emotional release, which I really don't like those words to begin with, because um, it's really not not all encompassing enough. Okay, it's a transform, it's a transformation, it's a healing, it's a you know, it's way more than just the release. But always ask permission. Is it okay to do this in front of people? And over 50% of the time I get, no, I need privacy for this. And so if I'm going to be teaching that, I have to make sure that my animal is on hundred percent on board. 
with going through the, the process of that, especially emotions with people watching. Exactly. And don't have too many people touching and don't have too many people definitely not talking. None of that. It needs Gary, when Gary would teach emotional work, all cell phones needed to be off. And many times he said, leave them in your rooms. Don't bring them into the classroom, number one. Number two, um, watches everything off. Number three, no talking, no talking. And in our big trainings, that was it because the person needs to be able to not be distracted as to what's going on in order to be able to allow the process to emerge within them and come to the surface from the subconscious, from the damaged psyche, from the soul that's holding this wounding all the way up to the conscious in order to allow it to be uh, literally um, moved through and then transformed and then new new thoughts, I call it turning wounds into wisdom, new thoughts then allowed to come in and be accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, that's <clears throat> important because I think that, um, I, I mean, I've taken raindrop, I got to take twice with Gary at the farm in Idaho um, and Tamara Packer. And um, I remember... I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it for myself. I shouldn't say I wouldn't have believed it. I would, would have been potentially less likely to believe it if I didn't see it for myself. But basically, this girl had uh, she had um, functional scoliosis, so she her scapula was like legit two two inches different. So scoliosis is that curvature in the spine from the when you look straight on the back, not so they're like kind of like this. She was in so much pain and nothing was done manually to the body to manipulate the joints or anything and just did the raindrop as, you know, did the oil and um, it, it, they did the before and the after. And this was the before and this was the after. I actually think I had the pictures um, of it and, it's, and that just goes to show the power of the intention because Tamara was like, yeah, no talking. Everybody's like dead silent. You shut your phones off because it's you, know, you create that space and then that translates into how we would work with our pets and animals, whether that be diffusing or just holding onto an oil or whatever. Um, that's a good reminder too, because they're very percept perceptually aware and there's so much going on. Right. So remember the fastest way into the nose and to the brain is through the nose, fastest way into the brain is through the nose, second fastest way is rough of the mouth. And when you're working with emotions, what is what? What's the librarian for all the emotions? The amygdala. Yeah. The amygdala is literally right in here. Okay, it's, if you take and you go straight in, find the center up here, straight in, find right under your locus coeruleus point back here, that little indent, straight in. Okay, you go straight in, straight in, straight in. Right in that center is the amygdala, and that is literally the librarian that literally that holds the memory and the catalog catalogs all the memories that are stored in our body of all of our emotional and physical experiences well the olfactory nerve the bulb is right up here and the olfactory nerve runs right through the amygdala literally it's like you know a train that goes right through the center of town how can you not know it's there but like a train when it goes through the center of town our oil molecules are like that and they travel and what they do then is when they find something that is calling for help a call for help Literally, like people getting off the, the train and going and handling issues in the town, these little molecules jump off, literally, the molecules that are in each one of Young Living Oils. That's why I love Young Living Oils above all other oils, because they can't get these results with any other oils. Bottom line. So what they do is they go, it goes through, the, the oil molecules travel through, and then all of a sudden the constituents in those molecules literally go, oh, my job's over here. My job's over here. My job's over here. My job's down there. My job's up here. And those little constituents travel once they hit that amygdala and boom, they start going where they are being called to go because they have a homing device in them like a Scud missile. And so that's really an oversimplification of a very complex biological process. But I hope you get the, the you know, it's a visual. If you can kind of get that yeah. visual and it works. And so that's why you can't overload and you can't do too much because you have to let the molecules do their job. And then you have to allow the shifting to take place. And then it's like, oh, yeah. Now, sometimes we need a long train, a lot of, a lot of molecules, you know, a lot, a, a lot. 
And sometimes we'll just need one engine, one oil, boom, and it comes out. So it all depends upon what you've got going on. So whenever you're working with emotions, nose first, always, always introduce it to the nose first. And then if you've got cellular memory hidden somewhere else in the body, then you can go ahead and start work with that. That's good. That's the simple, when you use the oils, you, it's, it's interesting how like I know that, but then it's easy to forget. Um, and it's good, it's a great reminder because um, it's all just really the basics for reminders. Um, so this one, I wanted to ask a question about, uh, Sandy has a uh, pity mix rescue and his pads are constantly becoming raw. Uh, suggestions on the best way to assist system um, and keep keep them well. I tried ointment and then gauze and socks. Um, she so said the biggest thing, that, but... why are they becoming raw, Barney? That's the first question I'd ask. Is 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 are they chewing it, or are is it the food? Is it the cleaner or the carpet spray or whatever that they're walking on, or if they're outside where the lawn sprayed? I mean, we have to find out why they're becoming raw. That's my first, I'm, you know, like a little bit of Sherlock in there. Yeah. That's why they're becoming raw. And then we can remedy it. Okay. First thing is, is find out why they're raw. Now with the raw, um, uh, there is a combination that works very good for raw. That's very nurturing and soothing both biochemically and energetically. And that's lavender and myrrh. You know, and if it's really bad where they need severe tissue regeneration, you add in helichrysum, but lavender and myrrh. And then I always will put like rose ointment over top or animal sense ointment over top. Or if you have any of the original blue tender tush diaper ointment, that stuff was amazing. If anybody's got any of that, that, that was amazing. The blue stuff. And um, that we use that a lot for the animals as well. So you're putting, to clarify, you're, you put lavender and myrrh on first and then the ointment on over top. Yeah, but it's usually not just topical. Find out, are they nervous and anxious? Is that why they're chewing? Are they chewing them? Is that why? Or is it, what are you using for your household cleaners? You know, what? What are what's in the water they're drinking? There's something going on internally that's creating this as well or environmentally that's creating this. We need to find out what that is you know, uh, and the lavender and the myrrh will be a great, a great help and ointment for a great soothing. Yeah. But I can tell you, it's you're not going to stop it until we find out what's causing it. Yeah, she, I, we haven't had a report that we, she posted that comment earlier. So, um, and now I lost it. Uh, for me, uh, Sandy. So Sandy, when you come back, and side note, she also said you you helped me to believe in myself last year at Glampin. Oh, I, I don't know what glamping was, but it sounds like it's fun. It glamping fun. is beauty school at the Idaho Balsam Fur Harvest Camp. Oh, wow. That would have been yeah. yeah. Um, Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Yeah, and this one, uh, Jean Jockish says, Sherry Ross, you were like, you were like hearing a female version of Gary. Thank you for sharing the love. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Because we can feel it, Sherry. And, that's why I know that people that are going to watch this, it's just, I think the big thing is just recognizing that because you, you don't have to say much and you emit a lot of what you, what you are. And we're just, we're grateful for that. Thank you. Yeah. He had big shoes on Ian. They broke the mold when he, he, he yes. was made and when he left, he's one of a kind. Yes. There was a big, big void, but that's where, I felt that, and I said that to you when we were at the, his celebration of life. That I feel that um, that it was a calling up towards everybody that is in um, Young Living and believes in the mission, the vision, um, to just fill in those shoes because they were pretty big, and that's just a call forward for all of us. Yeah. Well, were you um, uh, regaining yourself there? <laughs> I'm going to find another really good question. Um, I have a feeling, Sherry, we're probably going to need to, because we got we got going a little bit after, but would you, because I want to pull up, there's a question down here that I wanted to ask you to, to hit on. Um, 
but would you be open to doing a second call in the next few weeks? Because I feel like there's no way that we're ever going to get through all of the questions. <laughs> yeah, maybe when I, get, when I get back from the European Convention, it would be good. <laughs> yeah, and that's also a little risky of me to ask you live on the call, but I kind of already knew the answer before I'd ask it, asked it anyways. But um, can you tell us the horse? Because I put this in the email. And yes. I want to share this oh, with yeah. You. I was looking for the picture. Yeah. Yes, because I actually have a fancy phone now. <laughs> <laughs> Barney knows. Barney knows my. Uh, I have a, a a Nokia brick as my normal phone. Everybody. <laughs> it's actually a flip phone. No, it's not flip. Oh, no, it's but it, it's like, but it looks like the, the old ones. You know, they, when they would flip open. <laughs> Just it, it looks like that. I'm gonna holler at Michelle. Hey, Michelle, honey, can you bring me my my other little phone? Thanks. I didn't think that they still made them. But you, oh, yeah, they, yeah, did. they didn't, but you just you had it for so long. Okay, so here we go. That's the story, yeah. All right, so um, are you ready? I've got a whole, uh, now that I have learned texting, very little, very little bit. But this is going to be her. Um, let me, and this was all done remote because I was far away. But uh, this is her. Her name is Petra. Can you guys see it? Let me see, Barney. Is that good? Can you see yeah. it? Yeah. I'm well, there. Is that better? Okay, yeah. good. It's a little, uh, you try to like, it up a little closer. A little closer. Yeah. And over yeah, like over the other way. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Right there. Okay. Right. Yeah. Good. No glare. Okay, there we go. Sorry, glare. Oh man, the glare. Okay, sorry guys. So those are the two ladies that um, I, uh, Alicia and Marissa that I was guiding from a number of states away because this happened as I was driving back from a conference um, from, I, uh, from Utah to Montana because I was, um, we had a big event there that I had to go right to immediately. So um, this beautiful mare, and I have another picture to show you here. Um, the farm where my horses are, and I'll show you that picture in just a little bit. The farm where my horses are um, in Minnesota, uh, still until I can get my ranch out west, um, uh, is a breeding facility for Frisians. And this is Petra that you just saw. She is a star mare in the Frisian world, which is very valuable. And her foals, all every foal she has uh, makes first preemie, which means in that state of that uh, grading system, they're always number one. So she has amazing foals. She just pops out and she's in her 20s and she's still breeding. And so um, I got a call and it said that um, Petra's down and they had three horses uh, deliver. Uh, one was on time, one was a day, one was early and one was very early and one was very late. So boom, one, two, three days in a row, Three mares delivered, all three had little boys, all Frisians, and all very high caliber Frisians. So there was a bit going on at, at the facility. There's like 28 horses there. And so, um, and it's just a single family owned ranch. I mean, you know, Vicky owns the ranch and, and uh, it's it's not giant big operation by any means. Yeah. And so it's a family situation. And so uh, you said Pedro's down colicking. Now Pedro's only colicked once before. And I find it interesting that when Petra colic before, Vicky would never use the oils 20, 20 years ago, or actually 2002, so we're talking 17 years ago, she would never use the oils. But when Petra colic then, everything they had done didn't work. And so finally she acquiesced and was willing to use the oils and we saved her life then. Well, Petra colic again, and they had vets out. And they, they uh, and having a brand new boy, this was five days after, three days, four days, five days. I mean, very short after she had her full. And she was not doing well. She was down. They tried everything with the oils, um, did everything that they were supposed to do. You know, 20 drops Copiva, 20 drops uh, Digize, 10 drops uh, Peppermint in the mouth, and then 10, 10, and 10 on the tummy got her up and walked her, walked her, walked her. Every 20 minutes did that. They did it for two hours still. They did get some some of, of the manure out. They did get some poo out, so they thought they were good. And the next day she was bad again. And it's like, what's going on? Well, then they got the vet out. And the vet said, um, I don't know. She's not doing well, but we think her gut's twisted. And they're like, what? And they said, yeah. So to save the story, the long story, over a period of, of three days, 
um, the vets kept coming out and finally they said, you have to put this horse down. The, the, it is definitely twisted. And here she is. Mom has a five, literally five day old baby stud. And we're like, you've got to be kidding me. These horses, if you go check top national award-winning Friesian horses and you'll see the value financially, let alone everything else for here. And so I, um, I do what I always do. I, you know, I checked out, I checked out the horse. I suggested some other things to do. And then I, I made some phone calls because for me, the value of team is everything. The value of community is everything. So I called Candace Hoke, called Sharon Marsh. I mean, some of these top people who I know. And I said, have y'all ever worked with Twisted Gut? And they go, yeah. And I said, done belly lift, because I told them to do belly lift. I told them to do a number of things. And so, and they kept, she never, she wouldn't die. I mean, they kept doing stuff and she just continued to another day, another day, another day. And then um, finally, I Candace said, Sherry, okay, here's what you're going to do. You are going to, do you know what side of the gut is, you know, what side it's on? I go, yeah, it's on the right side. She goes, okay, do traditional raindrop up and down the spine like you normally would for the horse. And then she said on the side where it's twisted, do the raindrop oils in the exact order on that side also. And I said, okay, all right. So we did, and then we did 10 belly lifts and I'll be blessed if her gut did not untwist itself, completely untwisted. We have five veterinarians over a couple few days say, put this horse down. And over and the, and the owner was didn't want to see her in pain anymore. But I kept checking in with Patriot because I'm an animal communicator. Whether you believe in it or not, I, I am. And I was born that way. And I what? You I believe, believe it. <laughs> You've seen it enough, Marty. You believe yeah. it. And so I kept checking in with her and I was remote and, and I have a strong heart connection with paper anyways. And I'm like, honey, she goes, just, I, I, I'm not, don't put me down. Don't put me down. I know I can get through this. I just need some help. I just need some help. She just kept saying that. And I'm like, okay, okay. And so that's where the ladies came out and uh, they literally, uh, Alicia has a horse there and Marissa uh, lives there. She's uh, um, uh, going for her, um, I believe PhD in in bio and animal biology. So she lives there while she's at the university. And so we literally were able to get that gut untwisted. And um, I'm going to show you this, but then there's two, three other things that were happening at the same time for Barney. I didn't even tell you that. Um, so here's a picture of her uh, finally when it untwisted, but I want you to look at the right side versus the left side. Let's see if I can get you away from yeah, Blair. Can, can you see it? Yeah, it's much bigger than the left. Can you, and also, can you see the drop? Look yeah, at the drop yeah. on, on her right side versus her left side. Yeah. Okay. And that was after the fact. Um, they said it was so huge on that right side. And this is after the fact. But this is where they finally could put her out, to, out, out in the round pen. Wow. Uh, the oils orally every day. Um, we continued to do the raindrop. We didn't do all the movements every day. Maybe every two or three days we did the actual movements, but we put the raindrop oils on every day on the spine and along that right side. And then we had to go oral because her foal was really long-legged, um, uh, unusually long-legged. She's going to have a big boy here. And they had a really hard time. Normally she delivers like amazing. If you were a woman, you'd wish you could deliver as easy as her. But this one was a difficult delivery. And I really, we really think that something got tore up inside in her and damaged because of how difficult the delivery was for her. Not, it was just, she'd never had a delivery like this. And when I checked her out, I very clearly got, she's not, inside's not right. So we started to give her cystus and helichrysum orally. A lot of cystus and a lot of helichrysum and copaiba orally. And that continued in addition to what we'd already done and then continued with the diegize. And uh, she's almost 100% now. And it's been, um, well, it was 
my gosh, uh, two days ago, it would have been four weeks. So um, the convention ended on the 21st to 22nd. This was the 23rd. No, today is the 23rd. This was the 23rd, exactly four weeks ago today. So Barney, um, that, that was it. But here's the other caveat that we had. <laughs> we had uh, her foal, her little boy, because he couldn't get to her and get the colostrum because she was too sick, um, he spiked a really high fever, like really high, scary fever. And he was just little, like a few days old. So orally, we gave him Ravansara and Exodus 2. And then he got really, he got really constipated, by the way, before this. So we gave him um, uh, uh, Exodus 2, okay? And we gave him uh, Ravansara, and then we gave him Daijais and Copaiba. And he got those orally and his and peppermint and his fever came down literally overnight. And then we continued to give him not as high doses, we gave him quite a bit, like three times a day. And then um, no carrier oil, we just gave him to him right in his mouth. And then um, uh, then we would put peppermint on him, peppermint on him, peppermint on his tummy. And he was just little. And we got him through that and he got constipated. So diagized copium and peppermint helped him get through that orally as well. And that constipation was before the oils. The oils did not make him constipated. The oils helped him clear through it. Right. And they were given him enemas because the vet said do enemas and the enemas were not working at all, at all. So that's happening at the same time. And then one of their studs dropped, literally dropped. And it was also ghastly hot and ghastly humid at this time. Um, they have a stud with a red gene. And when you have a red gene stud in the Frisian world, you've got a multi-million dollar horse. It's they're like rare as rare can be because there are hardly any of them around. And so uh, he carries the red gene. And so he dropped, he got bit by a tick and he just dropped. And they're like, oh my God. So we had to give him oils orally too <laughs> to to get him through it because his respiratory all of a sudden stopped. I mean, he just, his, his all of his organs from the venom were like, Ooh. so Kunzia is one of the great oils. We have put it on topically on site with purification, helichrysum, copaiba, raindrop on him, of course. And then we did, um, we did again, uh, Kunzia this time, because Kunzia is one of the best oils for venom. Purification is a great oil for venom. We absolutely needed to do Ningxia Red. Oh, we also did Ningxia Red in mom, in Petra, once she got clear, once the gut untwisted, a lot of Ningxia Red to get her vitality back. But on on, on Draco, the stud, we did um, Ravansara, Kunzia, Exodus 2, okay? We did Emu Power, orally. A copaiba digest. Whenever you're working with a horse, you always got to do copaiba and digest orally. So important. And then we did raindrop topically, couldn't see it topically. And you're like, Sherry, that's a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. But he could handle it. He could handle it. And we didn't have time to let's wait and see if this works for him. A lot of RC and cedar wood on his chest area, uh, throat and chest. A lot, lot, lot of RC. And um, I have, let me see if I can show this to y'all. Oops, come on, back down. I don't know. Okay, please, please, done. There we go. Okay, I'm going to show you this, Barney. Yeah. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. Let's see if it works. Here he is, right here. Okay, this is really dark, and I apologize. Oh, this, is the, this is Petra's. Uh, no, nope. this is Draco, the okay. stud. Oh, the glare. Can you see him? There yeah. he is. Starting to get. They was starting after the oil treatment. He got up and he was starting to walk. Oh, from because he got bit by the the tick. The tick. And the tick had a venom that just literally he dropped. Within moments of being bit, he dropped straight down yeah. from the ground. So this is bringing him in. <laughs> so that's the oils got him up, and got and we put the oils in Ningxia Red and gave him Ningxia Red. So that yeah. just gives you an, okay, here you go. There's his hind in, his less than redeeming property. But there, now you can see him, how gorgeous he is. There he is. Okay. Wow. That's the, that's the astounding, spectacular, amazing story, which I think, again, just kind of goes even further to 
the inspiration to continue to educate ourselves. That's the one thing that, that I've learned, not only with oils, but just in general, I've learned so much myself, even growing up around animals and thinking that I knew a lot um, or just was experienced, I guess, but just there's so much to, to learn. And at times when it feels overwhelming, um, I can imagine if some people are new and they're listening, they're like, wow, there's so much to learn, but that's the fun part. That's the, the neat part. And then we have great teachers like you, Sherry, that are willing to share from experience, which is just awesome. Plus the animal desk reference, Barney. Yes. The animal desk reference is second to none. Um, if you guys give me one sec, I'll grab so you can see it. Yeah. Yeah, and then while you're grabbing that, Beverly was asking about the oral um, part. How much orally? She just is asking how much orally when you guys were giving the one. How much orally of what? Beverly's got like the bat phone to you, Barney. <laughs> what? How, how but for who? <laughs> oh, well, yes, that's, I think you were talking about um, uh, Petra. Yeah, let me pull this up here. Well, Petra, I already I already kind of said that. 30 okay. drops, 20 drops. Uh, Hilichrism and myrrh, uh, copaiba and digize. Um, we did literally, like, uh, myrrh we did topical, but hilichrism and cystus, yeah. we did oral. Now, the other thing that I did that's really important, release oil. We put release oil all over the sacrum, and then we took a giant puddle of release oil and we rubbed the whole right side of the horse and the underbelly of the horse. And we took release oil, two puddles in our hands, up inside under the main artery, inside the hind legs, that main artery. We slathered that with release oil too, just slathered it and rubbed it in there. And that's when, because what we needed to do, and then we did the belly lifts. You don't know what a belly lift is. A belly lift is where you get a big bath sheet or a big bath towel, okay? And you get, um, usually it's one person on each side, but Frisians are not tiny. So you, yeah. we, they, did, they did two people on each side. And what we did, we put the oils on, did the raindrop, did everything, oils orally, topically. And then we did a belly lift where we literally held up the belly, took the pressure off, held it as long as we could, at least to the count of 10, 20 is better. And then you, you don't let it go. You softly let it down. You let it be down for 30 seconds to a minute, and then you do it again, the same thing. And that was done 10 times. And so what, what you did was you allowed the, the pressure to be relieved so the organs could shift, and that's what happened. So right. each step was important in this, Barney. It wasn't like this did it or that did it. Yeah. Every step was important. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that's no, that's good. I think she was referring to just the when you're talking about giving. Yeah, so you stated that or, uh, before, but the first one, and then it was the second one, just about orally, like how much. And when you're giving them orally, um, like, are you just holding it and like right under the tongue, and then they just yeah, just open it. the lip and dunk it in. Yeah, and then they just pull it in. Yeah, they just we just put it right in the mouth. Right. If they're too weak, like uh, like with Draco, he, he was down. So we put in a syringe uh, with no needle, but, you know, a syringe. Yeah. And we put Ningxia Red. We put the oils in Ningxia Red. And then slowly, when they're down, you syringe it in their mouth just slowly. Right. Slowly, slowly. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, there's um, Beverly saying awesome clarification. Angela, uh Lucy is saying, OMG, I can't wait to sit down and watch this later. <laughs> um, yeah, and Beverly, to clarify, Petra oral dosage is what I asked. So that was good. Um, so last one, I promise, because I um, we normally budget an hour, and we're an hour and a half, and I know you probably have to go. We're an hour and a half already? You're kidding. I'm not kidding, no. Oh, my gosh. I do, I do like to think of myself as very humorous and funny. Um, but sometimes I'm not joking. <laughs> um, so this one for Madeline, this is, so this is a huge one. Inherited my friend's dog when she passed away from cancer. He is always licking his paws and body. The vet says he is allergic uh, to fleas, gave him antibiotics, and wants me to put him on an external flea and tick medicine. Um, added sulfurs onto his food, but it made him itch more. Boosted his immune system with Life9, but still licking. Uh, only use Steve's cleaner and uh, the unwilling detergent for the laundry. 
uh, using lavender with coconut oil with animal scents ointment on top. Skin improving but still licking. These help. What's a dog's name? Uh, I don't know. We can find out. Yeah, so, Matt, you're there. Food is a big one, so we just need to make sure that whatever food they're feeding is, um, I. Yeah, you know, people say grain free, but you have to have the right kind of grains. Like einkorn's a good grain because it's it's balanced. It doesn't have the renegade protein in living einkorn, yeah. and it also um, it also uh, has balance of three, six, and nine, which you need. Okay, so that's one of the big pieces right there. Um, just a second, something there we go. Something popped up, and my screen needs to go away. Um, also. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm hearing a lot food. I'm hearing, um, whoa, I'm hearing worms in a big way. So um, what we need to do is pear free and digize um, and oregano. And uh, that's huge. Um, so pear free capsules orally. Uh, what size dog is it? We need to. Uh, we, need to Bo we said the name is Bosco. Um, okay on castor and pollux organic good what that is and what is what's the breed honey how it's the weight and what's the age approximately yeah if you can madeline if you're still on here go ahead and yeah see when you work with oils you need information you, you just can't like it doesn't work what works for one doesn't work for the other meaning that if i've got a little yorkie and then i've got a you know an 80 80 pound big lab i'm going to do different maybe the same thing, but I'm going to do different amounts because what they can handle and what they need. Right. So she and said 20 so, pounds, but I don't, I didn't see what kind of, or what kind. What, what the breed kind. is or the age. Okay. Yeah. So 20 pounds. Yeah. Okay. Now, is it unusually skinny? Uh, because a, of this? a schnoodle three years of age. Schnauzer and poodle. Yeah. Okay. And is it unusually skinny? Um, I'm hearing that this dog's nature would normally be a little bit more beefy, um, not fat, but more beefy. And so um, it, I don't know if the dog is skinny or where its weight's at, but definitely pear free. I would do, uh, seriously? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're ready for this. Yeah. So Bosco's like, I'm arguing with Bosco here. That's how I go seriously in my head. I'm arguing with, I'm yep. going, hey, you can handle one pair free day. He goes, nope. I go, well, every other day then? He goes, nope, maybe every three days. I go, come on, we got to get you ready. He goes, don't like those burps. <laughs> <laughs> And the reason I'm laughing is because the pear free for some does do what we call the pear free burps. Right. It's like, okay, buddy, well, you've got to do it. So then what she's going to have to do then, if you don't, is literally take a push pin, puncture the capsule, and squirt it in your mouth. So then, then you really got a good going on. He's going, yeah. oh, no. All right. So oregano, digize, these are all really powerful oils that help with worming. Um and pear free. You can do pear jize, but pear jize was really made for cats and tiny little dogs because it's highly diluted. So I wouldn't use pear jize. I would do more pear free, to be honest. Capsules. Yeah. Um, if you can get the capsule down, otherwise, again, puncture the capsule, squeeze it in the mouth. And then oregano and digize is going to help a lot get the gut shifted. So you want to do that um, after they've eaten because otherwise they won't eat because the taste in the mouth. Right. So you do that after they've eaten, and then you definitely want to do after a couple hours um, before bed perhaps, um, uh, life nine. Definitely give it life nine uh, for sure. And then um, uh, let's see. Hmm. I'm talking to Bosco, so hang tight here. I'm asking some questions. Yeah. Um, Okay, he's saying something about I need it to smell less powdery. So I don't know if she uses some powdery stuff at home or somebody's using some powdery scent or some scent that smells like powder. But he's he's like, does she know what I'm talking about? He's literally like, I need it to smell less powdery here. I'm like, yeah. okay. <laughs> so alert. Yeah, she says. What? We'll see what she says. Yeah. Um, and and she said that um, vet says the weight's correct, um, and then she just put have parasite, but I don't know if she meant has he has parasite. Have pear free or have pear free, yeah. yeah. So um, uh, four fleas, okay, Kunzia. 
Kunzia is one of the best things for fleas. Kunzia and purification. Those two oils together rock. And if, if they're really bad, you got to add in black pepper and oregano into your mix and then pet them down really good. But that can be very strong, oregano and black pepper. So I'd start with Kunzia and purification together. So I do purification and augment with Kunzia. Do a good puddle. Rub down really, really, really well. And then you can even use that combination in the house. Kunzia, uh, Kunzia and purification is a great, great uh, combination. So... But then yeah. orally, that's what you got to do. And how long? Um, I'm guessing um, somewhere between six and seven weeks is what you're going to have to keep this up to really get things shifted. And yeah. then three months, three months for the Life 9. And then the other thing that you want to do is maybe start giving it a Copa Iba orally. That it would like every day because it's very sensitive and its whole GI processes is very sensitive. So Copa Iba is one of the best oils to do. And, of course, whenever I talk about oral, you know, you got to go to the vitality part. I just forget that. But everybody just kind of know that. Make that a yeah. statement. And so uh, Copa Iba, I would say probably um, f easily five drops orally every day until uh, he, gets, he gets better, which is going to be probably two and a half to three months. How's that? That's that was good. That was the short story, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to know what the powdery smell is. He doesn't. He wants it to smell less powdery. Yeah, Madeline. Yeah, Madeline if you're on still, would you just give us some feedback if you can comment on that about the powdery smell or whatever, whatever that might be. Um, I thought that this was interesting. <laughs> Um, well, she's coming back here. One last thing, and then and then we'll wrap it up here. There's um, this uh, uh, this person's name is Pony Girl Pudding Tane, <laughs> um, but that's on Facebook. So I don't know what your real name is, but she said <laughs> Gary Gary let me ride Jasmine, his jousting horse, um, which is pretty cool. And she said, "Can you?" She just said, "My pony, please." I think she's asking about this question, which. My, um, I don't know if you can, can you see that on there? Does that question make sense to you? Gary, let me ride Jasmine, his dousing horse. That's the only question I see. Oh no, there's this one. Uh, my Morab uh, horse lost all top line, lost two pasture mates in 2018, dot, 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 pre-Cushing's question. Mark. Yeah. So Cushing's is adrenals, thyroid, endocrine system, autoimmune. Yeah. So that's a huge thing. Uh, you got to get off all carbs, all sugar, uh, high carb off. You got to go more uh, balance of proteins and fats for sure. You need fats for sure. You all know the oil for adrenals is nutmeg, endoflex. And the one oil that will help her a lot is joy oil. Joy oil is the same frequency of proper functioning adrenal glands, which is 188 megahertz, okay? So joy oil is going to be huge for her. And for many people, that's also, and animals, many beings, it's also a very good oil for uh, grief. Because rose, of course, we know is the number one oil for grief. Well, of course, uh, joy has got rose in it. So given the fact that she's gone adrenal, and gone autoimmune from grief. Yeah. You know, it's usually what happens is one of two things. Either they go autoimmune or they go lungs. Okay. Right. She's not going lungs um, yet, but that will be her next if she keeps the downward spiral. So I would absolutely not even hesitate to use, you know, a, a nutmeg oil, endoflex, joy oil. Um, the food is huge, 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 huge. No sweets. You got to pull her off. If she needs a sweet, give her a carrot. Okay. Yeah. Not apples. They're too sweet right now. Um, any green vegetables you can give her, give her green vegetables, especially those that have iodine in it would be good. Um, and thyromin. If you can open up a capsule of thyromin, I would do, uh, uh, let me see one a day of those. And I mineral essence is going to be the bomb for her. Um, Ningxia Red, if your budget can afford it, she's got a big smile with Ningxia Red. And yeah. um, sulfur zyme is huge for her. And I would do a tablespoon every day of the, of, you can do the powder or uh, capsules of sulfur zyme. One quarter teaspoon equals one capsule. So you'd end up doing 12 capsules a day for her or just get the powder now that it's back. So yeah. um, that's what's going to help her a lot. And then raindrop technique. 
but I would do a raindrop technique, but I would add in a lot more nurturing oils like joy for sure. I would add in any oils that bring emotional comfort. Okay. Yeah. Um, is huge, 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 huge. And there's a really good book called um, Aromatherapy for Healing the Spirit. And I don't have my handy, but Aromatherapy for Healing the Spirit is a, uh, Hey, Barney, if you want to talk for a sec, I'll go grab one. It's literally 10, 30 seconds away. Yeah. I'll go, not even, 20 seconds, talk for a little bit, and yeah, I'll go I'll, grab one. Yeah, you grab that and show that, show that and then, because Madeline has a comment back in response to the power uh, question. And um, <clears throat> and then I wanted to pull this up. I thought this was funny before, until Sherry gets back, which, by the way, are you guys enjoying this call or not? I'm going to presume that all of you who are on here live, my wife's been texting me. She's like, dinner has been served uh, 30 minutes ago. And I said, just wait, I'm on the, I'm on with Sherry Ross. Uh, we'll be a couple minutes. And then she just said, ha, ha, ha. Um, and <laughs> what it, did you just say? Adrian, Adrian was like, my wife's texting me saying, are, you know, dinner's ready. Are you coming? And I'm like, yeah, but I'm on with Sherry Ross. And she just said, LOL. She's like, okay, I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and this other lady posted this comment. It was hilarious. It made me laugh. Um, shoot, I can't find it. it was something. Oh, uh, Melissa. Oh, shoot. Hmm. Right here. Oh, yeah, right here. Um, I should be out doing barn chores, but I'm watching this instead. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. So, so okay, in case you didn't know, here's my phone. <laughs> Wait, let's see it. Let's see it. You got it? Wow. Get antenna. Oh my goodness. <laughs> my it still phone. functions, but you have that one. And then Barney, this is the one you call me on. Okay. Well, that's, you call me, buddy? That's this the correct the one. one. Okay, yeah, this is the one. <laughs> this is it. That's okay, so here we go. Received calls. Okay, top number is Barney's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so here's the book. Yeah, let's see the book here. Aromatherapy for Healing the Spirit. This is one of the best books on emotions, behavior, um, when uh, spirit, spiritual, like when you've taken deep hits spiritually. This is a phenomenal book, Aromatherapy for Healing the Spirit. Great, great, great book. And um, you can just open up any, any oil, and it gives two pages on where it started in history, uh, where the, why they started using it as an oil, how it was used historically, then the physical, emotional, behavioral, and spiritual aspects of why you need this oil, what's going on with you, powerful. So that's this one. And who's your author in that? Uh, Gabriel Moje. Okay. Can you see it here? Yeah, yeah, I just slipped it up a little. I got your name here, just hang on. Yeah, right there. Okay, well that's good, so then you guys can go Check that out. The other one that was asking, Sarah May was asking the other one. Um, no, not that one. Cassie says, I'm watching this while at work. Side note, Cassie, don't tell your boss. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Keep working, Cassie. <laughs> um, Sarah May was saying, what was the other book that Sherry held up? That was the, it was the Inner Transformations one. Or this one. And, and yeah, just, yeah. So I can... Um, I'll see if I can find a link to that, Sarah Mayer. That's, LS, that's LSP, and you can yeah. get this at LSP too. Oh, you can? Yeah. Okay, well, basically all three, that makes it simple then. All three of those books, you can, and LSP, it, for those of you who are in Young Living and don't know this, it's just, you just go to discoverlsp.com. Keep talking, be right back. Yeah, and uh, they're, they're a publisher that uh, exclusive, well, for the most part, exclusively publishes materials for, a lot of this content for Young Living because they uh, just with how everything's set up, Young Living can't be in a position to uh, suggest that you know all of this. It, it sounds it's really silly, but it's all due to compliance and in order to be uh, in alignment with everything is that there's uh, these educators and publishers and authors that write the stuff and then um, Life Science Publishing publishes it, so then you can get, at least get your hands on it. So people who want to know about equine raindrop. I've got this DVD, okay? Can you see that good, Barney? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that one. And then it comes with a flip chart that I created that you literally, but you need the flip chart. I mean, you need the DVD because you can't just do it by the flip chart. And it goes through all the steps. So where do people get that? 
They can get it right from my office. Then. Okay. So well, you can give to, all save, to save the 150 emails that we're going to get tomorrow, yes. if you don't tell people where to get it. Because this is a thing. I mean, we we, we want to wrap, wrap it up here because this is amazing. We'll do another call with Sherry. Uh, metaphorically here, everybody put your hands up saying, yes, I would be down to listen to Sherry again. Um, I just am grateful for you to take the time to be with us to share today, um, Sherry. And I'm looking forward to having you on the summit again this year for both of them, for the Wild Summit and the Animal Summit. Um, and more to come on this down the road, but Sherry and I have been talking about doing um, a, a live conference here in Canada. We made the attempt this year, but there was so much excitement uh, when, when Young Living decided to uh, cancel theirs and we just didn't want to conflict with the other ones. So we're going to try and time them. And then you guys want to learn from Sherry in person. There'll be opportunities in the States. Obviously she teaches all over the country and all over the place, um, but we'll be doing it. It's going to be a special live event for just Animal Wellness Summit um, attendees, participants and members. Um, you guys will be able to attend live and imagine having this live and asking questions like this. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. But before we officially wrap up, Sherry, um, and I'd like you to say your final words of wisdom um, beyond that, what you shared already. But where can people go to order the DVD bundle? Because my inbox is going to get blown up tomorrow if we don't share that now. <laughs> so just email um, support at young-living.net. So just support at young dash like a minus sign living dot net. So and then just put in the subject line equine uh, or horse or equine RDT, RDT, raindrop technique. And then I've also got uh, a DVD that's got the uh, canine one in also. If they want that one. So okay. but that wasn't fast to grab. So there you go. Well, the other the other thing. Well, maybe you and I can talk about this after. But um, oops. Is that I'll put this in as a comment, what you just said, but that maybe we can, um, if people are interested, if you guys, I know that some people email us anyways that, that are supported Full Circle Holistic Health, and then we can pass you over to Sherry. Um, yeah. Maybe we can help because I think that it's great to have to have that information, have it handy. And um, yeah, so I have it right there. Yeah, it is young-living.net. Young um, uh, that is good. Now, the, the, I did say the last thing. My wife always reminds me she, when she watches my call. She's like, you say, okay, the last thing here like 15 times. I'm like, I know. <laughs> but it doesn't help any better when I'm talking to Sherry Ross. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's it's for the for the good. So somebody was, uh, Madeline came back and said, in response to the powder, said, thanks, um, use nothing powdery, um, but was giving sulfurzyme powder only uh, diffuser on me, uh, only Young Living Lotions, um, was worried that he was still missing Beverly and did not feel welcome with me and my dog, Coco. Oh, no, 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 no. He's quite comfortable with you, um, as comfortable as he'll allow himself to be. Yeah. But he literally smells a powdery smell. Um, and and. I don't know if you've ever been around people who use a lot of powder, but they have a smell. Yeah. <laughs> I, growing up, I had people around me using a lot of powder. And so he smells that powdery smell and he doesn't like it, whether it's that baby powdery smell, which some people absolutely love. So it could be some of the oils you're diffusing that create that smell that he's calling a powdery smell. Yeah. Okay. And that just ask Barney and Adrian about the baby smell because they got it going on. <laughs> yes, you do. Only four, only four and five years <laughs> for babies. So Joanne was just asking his sulfurs on the powder the dog does not like. Um, and it appeared that what she had said that, yeah, that was, he didn't like it. And, you know, this is the important part is to listen, right? And, and to apply it and maybe the dosage or the amount was too much. Or, or mix it in something. You know, mix it in something, mix it in Ninksha Red, mix it in something so that because whatever it is, he's smelling it, Yeah. you know, he's tolerating it, but he just says less of that powdery smell would be good. <laughs> yes. Okay. So final words of wisdom for today with Miss Sherry Ross, what, what would you like to leave us with? Well, one is your wife to me is Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> I adore your wife and oh, I think she's amazing. 
And um, she's just the epitome of an astonishing woman in my world. So um, you got dang lucky, buddy. She said yes to you. <laughs> I sure am. I sure am. <laughs> and I'm sure because she's an extremely intelligent woman with a phenomenal heart and yeah. such an all-encompassing soul and spirit that for her to pick you too, you got to be pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I'm glad she saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and uh, you got a lot of fun ahead of you in your life with your with your little ones. You have yeah. a lot of fun ahead of you, you. so it's going to be great fun. Um, yeah. I guess for me, what would be fun for me is I do something at the end of every class called popcorn it up, and I always ask people to popcorn up, meaning popcorn, pop it up, don't, no order. What you got out of today? What were your aha moments? What did you get out of your time invested? Because Barney and I literally had the privilege of having this much of your life that you will never get this time back. Yeah. Bottom line. So what is it? What 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 gave you value today? And when we and so if you guys could all just start writing in and, and just write it in quick or so however long you type, but yeah. to me, that's what's most important, Barney, because everybody gets to see it, right? Does everybody right. get to see yeah. it? Okay, good. When I do this in class, people are like, oh, yeah, that's right. They write it down. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, right. they write it down. So every that's the value of people being present and showing up is because we all learn from each other. Even moi still learns a lot from everybody. Yes. So well, that's, that's, that's my parting is that to keep <laughs> talking, keep learning, and keep sharing. And by all means, you know, keep being teachable and uh, – how we started out was really important. And I know that was a little bit of talking and not too much this for this, this for this, this for this. Yeah, that's part, I think that's part, that's part of it. It's the foundation and it's the, um, yeah, the, the comments are coming in here now. This is really great. Yeah, this is going to be good. I think um, Diana, um, we use a certain oils for different, um, I think she didn't quite finish there, but mindset to believe just all of this sort of, this is really good because I am um, a strong believer in this as well. This is why, you know, this exists, the, the summit. I mean, to complement and complete not only our Young Living community, but to reach out further into the world for all the people that uh, have yet to discover not only Young Living products, but other ways that we can use to support our animals um, and pets because there's a lot of work to be done. And the little did I know in 2010, April the 23rd at 2 a.m. in the morning when I went to a traditional native healing circle and seeking guidance on my life, purpose, and mission and vision, uh, there's an old saying that says, be careful what you wish for because you sure just might get it. <laughs> and um, so this is part of my life, purpose, and mission and vision. And so I'm grateful for you, Sherry, and everybody to be here um, as well, and I will make sure that my wife watches the part about the words you had to share with her, um, or for her, and I appreciate that. And yeah, I think that just everybody to keep leaving the comments and know that you can share this. Um, you know, I think you can share this in groups, um, but you can copy the URL or the link and you can you can share it, you can tag people. Um, we will eventually have it up on YouTube. Um, and just the best thing is to keep sharing your comments, as Sherry said, with the, your biggest takeaway. And even if you go back and rewatch it again, we'll keep this alive. And um, yeah, and just keep, as she said, keep popcorning it up. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay, Sherry. Thank you Love so much. Thank we'll you. Be in touch. And next Thank time, you. I'll come through on your big Nokia phone, then you know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.